This is Ray Carrillo from the great Tar Heel State of North Carolina, and you're listening to Heaven Bound. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. Once again, on behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I am Doug Benedict, and we would like to extend once again a big thank you for spending yet another half hour with us. If this is your first time listening to us, we do extend one more big thank you for you, and we hope you do enjoy this half hour of good preaching as well as Southern Gospel music. Would you consider joining us today? If you do not currently attend a good Bible-believing church, try giving us, or give us a try. We are a small congregation located in Gregg, New York. We are located on the Sweeney Road, and our address here is 6968 Sweeney Road in Gregg, New York. You can put that into your GPS, and it'll take you just about right here. Or you can follow these easy, old-fashioned directions. If you're coming out of the south, like Utica or Boonville, head north on Route 12 and drive all the way to the Burke's Crossing Road, which sits right next to the Valley Brook Drive-In. Or if you're coming out of the north, like out of Watertown or Lowville, head south on Route 12 and once again take Route 12 all the way to the Burke's Crossing Road, right next to the Valley Brook Drive-In. You're going to make a left-hand turn from the if you're coming from the north on the Burke's Crossing Road. Take the Burke's Crossing Road all the way to the end. Make your a left-hand turn onto Greg Road. Head up the hill, and your first right-hand turn will be Sweeney Road. And we are located up there about 200 yards on the right. We do have a sign that is really hard to see, unfortunately, because there is so much snow. But with all the warm weather that we've had, we will very soon be able to see the entire sign. I doubt we'll see any grass here sometime soon, but it is coming. The hope is coming. Anyways, bad, feel bad for you snowmobilers. But you, there's plenty of room to park, so don't be afraid to come give us a try. If for some reason you cannot make it, give us a call. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271 or send us an email at cbclewiscounty at gmail.com, and we'll try to get someone to come out and pick you up. Or you can always listen to us live at cbclewiscounty.com. We do have a change in our events for this week. Brother Dewey Williams got pushed back one day, so he's not going to be starting with us today, but he will be starting tomorrow, and he will be with us until Thursday the 19th. And that will start every night at 7 o'clock. And then looking even farther down the road is Easter Sunday, which is March 5th. We do hope that you'll consider coming out, especially on those days, and join us for celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But let's get ready for Pastor as he comes. And he's going to talk about the real meaning of being saved and how some people kind of get mixed up on what we actually need to be saved from. So hopefully you enjoy this and get something out of today's message. But before that, let's listen to the Perrys as they sing Holy Shore. I hear God's children testify We're troubled sick and worn soldiers fainting in the fight not wanting to go on our knees are sore from bowing yet we know that's how we win so please let me remind you it will be worth a Will be better over 
Let's look once more and see what John saw coming any day. A holy cloud and then a voice heard calling us away to a place where there's no praying for the Acts chapter 4, Peter is preaching. Uh, while, if you have your Bibles, while you're turning there, let me just again encourage you that Dewey Williams is going to be with us tomorrow night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. Brother Dewey's a great guy. If you like Southern preachers, you love him. He's just down to earth as can be, 7 o'clock each night. I want to encourage you to come. Acts chapter 4, Peter's preaching. Now, Peter the Apostle Peter had been preaching previously in chapter 2, thousands were saved. And here in Acts chapter 4, again, Peter is preaching, and uh, again, thousands of people uh, are saved. I mean, just lots of folks saved. And he, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, tells us this, neither is there salvation in any other? For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The disciples asked Jesus, Jesus talking about rich man, the disciples asked Jesus, who then can be saved? The Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16 said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, I've said this many times about Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, that they are the clearest two verses in the New Testament on salvation. Paul writes for this, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, that is the gift of God. For by grace... Are ye saved, saved through grace, and that not of yourselves? Saved. Saved. What does it mean to be saved? In a physical sense, to be saved from something means that you are in real peril, real danger of dying, or serious injury. 
um, you were saved uh, from some physical calamity. Perhaps you were in a fire and you were saved from the fire or in a car accident. Someone pulled you from a car. My brother one time was walking somewhere. He had, long story, got in a fight with his one of my sister-in-laws. And so he was walking somewhere and he, he came to a, a turn in the road where he had to turn. And there was a Volkswagen that had been hit from behind and starting to smoke. And he reached into the back and he pulled out. A child out of the back, the car did catch on fire, but the little child was saved. Now, there is physical salvation. People are miraculously saved in a physical sense. Uh, you read about it all the time. But that's, that is not what the Bible is speaking about. It's not speaking about that. It's speaking about spiritual salvation. You see, we... Our greatest problem, our greatest need is that not physical need. It's not a physical need. Although we do need food and drink, and we need raiment, and we need a place to live and, and that kind of thing. That, that's a great need. There's no doubt about it. But to be saved spiritually, the disciples said, who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in that heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Again, it's not talking about a physical salvation, but it's talking about a spiritual salvation, spiritual deliverance, spiritual salvation. That's what it's speaking about. It's not talking about physical, but to be saved spiritually. Now, to be saved spiritually or to be saved physically, for that matter, there must be a very present and real danger. If the house is on fire, you need to be saved physically. If the car has uh, been in a wreck and you need to be pulled from it, you need to be saved. There's a very real and present danger. And the same thing is true about spiritual need. To be saved spiritually, a person must realize there's a very real and present danger. And that real and present danger, of course, is hellfire or the devil devil trying to deceive people. I read things on the internet. I love to read. I am so fortunate that I get paid to do what I do. I love doing what I do. I love reading. That You read all kinds of things by people on the internet that really are opposed to Christianity. They don't see a need of Christianity. They equate Christianity with uh, uh, all religions in the world. The devil's done a really good job. The devil's very real. Many people think that he is a myth. Uh, Jesus spoke about the devil. Jesus spoke about hell. Jesus spoke about hell fire. Many people think, well, that's just Christianity's way of scaring people into uh, believing. Friend, I'm not trying to scare anyone into believing. I'm trying to present the facts. Well, just, you know, as Joe Friday always said, just the facts, man, just the facts. One of the great proofs of Christianity is this, how it how it delivers people. Can we say it like that? How it delivers folks. One of my teachers in school, one of my best teachers in school, when I was in school, it was a long time ago. I know he's still alive, and I know he still preaches and still teaches. But one of my teachers in school, uh, Dr. Ed Heinsohn, uh, gives his testimony about the fact that he, his family, he, he was from Detroit, that in his family, nobody was saved. Nobody even went to church. And one Sunday or one week, they got a flyer in the mail from the Baptist church down around the corner, and they built a new building, and they were having a vacation Bible school, and his mother got the flyer, and she said, here, go down to this church. Now, she didn't go to church, but she said, here, go down to this church. Watch out for the cars. Don't get hit. Go down to the church and... See what was going on down there. He was just a kid, you know, he just so he went down and he heard. And when he heard about the fact that, man, you could uh, 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 have a home in heaven uh, and live forever and, and never uh, die and, and miss hell, and it was a free gift, and it was for anybody and everybody who call, who would ask Christ to save them and to call upon the name of the Lord. He said, man, this is just a good a deal too good to be true. And so when they said, if you like us to pray for you, if you like to be saved, just raise your hand. 
Well, who wouldn't want to live forever? Who wouldn't want to have an eternal home? Who wouldn't want to be with their friends and their family and living in the paradise of God? Who wouldn't want that? He said, I sure did. And he said, I raised my hand. And he said, I got saved. There are all kinds of accounts of people, and it changed his life, and there are all kinds of accounts of people who have been miraculously saved. And may I say that John Peterson wrote that song. It took a miracle to hang the stars in place, moon in place. It took a miracle to hang the stars in space. But when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and grace. Oh, it was miraculous, friend. And you can read accounts of people who have been spiritually, spiritually saved. Saved for heaven. Saved forever. Saved for eternity. Saved for, uh, from uh, hell. I guess you can say, well, you're saved from something and saved for something. Saved from hell, saved for heaven. Safe. Saved. Saved. It's a good Bible word. It's a good Bible word. And Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness we have done, but according to his mercy. He saved us. He saved us. See, God doesn't save us based upon how good we've been or who we may know or who we may be. God's forgiveness is based upon his very character. God's character is forgiveness. Somebody says to God, um, God, I promise you I'll never do that again. Well, number one, that's not true. You will do it again. And number two, God probably knows that isn't true too. But God doesn't forgive on the basis of, his, of who you are, but on who he is. The very nature of God, the very nature of God is to forgive. What a wonderful Savior. Dr. Heinsohn talks about how he was saved in Detroit. I, and there, there are lots of, our church, please, please do not take this the wrong way. Our church is full of people who give testimony to the fact of how they've been saved. Now, to be saved, you've got to realize that you are in great danger and great peril. When Jonathan Edwards preached his sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, back in the 1700s, Edwards kind of, the whole sermon was written out, and Edwards read it, and he didn't read it with a lot of emotion. However, the Spirit of God moved in that church, and people were hanging onto the pews. It's considered to be the beginning of the Great Awakening in America, where multitudes of people who were lost were saved. Not physically, but spiritually. D.L. Moody was a shoe clerk and a Sunday school teacher. Sunday school teacher's name was Kimball. He walked past the store where Moody was working. Moody worked in his brother's shoe store, and he walked past the store, and he walked past the store, and he walked past the store, and finally got the courage up to go in. And Moody was in the back, and he walked into the back, and he talked to Moody about being saved, and Moody was saved there. How it changed the world the director of the Pacific Garden Mission for many years was Mel Trotter. Mel Trotter was a drunk. I mean, he was a fall-down, slobbering, puke-up-all-over-yourself drunk. He stole the shoes off of his dead sons out of his casket to buy one more drink. Sam Jones was a prominent lawyer in Cartersville, Georgia. He was a drunk. He threw up all over himself one night and threw him out in the back. The next morning he walked in, and you'll forgive me for saying this, but Sam Jones said, it, my God, is that the great Sam Jones? He was miraculously saved and became a great preacher, a great evangelist across the South. I preached in someone's church in Mississippi, and while there I went to someone's house in the church for dinner, and they point out, see that tree out there? See that mark on that tree? I said, yeah. That's the, how high the floodwaters were in our area the year that Sam Jones came and preached here. God saved Sam Jones. God saved me. Who then can be saved? Anybody. Anybody can be saved. But my friend, to be saved, you must realize that you are in great danger and great peril. That there is a very, 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 very real 
hell. There is a very real lake of fire. And that when people die, when people die without Christ, that's where they go. Now, I know that there are people who say, well, I'll go there and be there with all my friends. The stupidity of that statement, and I mean this, the stupidity of that statement just simply staggers the imagination. I mean, go to hell with your friends. One, you won't see them. Two, you really won't hear them other than to hear people screaming. Um, hell's a horrible place. Why would anybody want to go there? There is no other name. There is no other name according to what Peter says. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is salvation in none other. None other. None. Nobody else. You cannot be saved any other way. Now, I know people say, oh, you, you guys are so narrow. No, I'm not. The Bible is. The Bible's kind of narrow. And Jesus said this, narrow is the way and straight is the gate. That leads to eternal life. And if you be there to find it all, oh, there's all kinds of scoffers and mockers and, and Bible deniers out there and Christ deniers. And they're all out there. I meet them. Come into contact with them. They call me on the phone sometimes, want to argue. Look, there is salvation in none other than Jesus, for there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. My dear friend, if you're listening to me this morning, I ask you that question. Are you saved? Are you saved? I don't mean have you been saved physically. Well, I was close in a car wreck one time. Boy, I was pretty close. And boy, I tell you, it was close preacher. And I was almost killed. But man, I, I made it through. I was saved. No, I'm not talking about that kind of saved. I'm not talking about, man, I was out in the lake and a big thunderstorm came up. The boat sank. But boy, we made it to shore and I was saved. Not that kind of saved. My wife caught the house on fire one night, preacher cooking. But we made it out, and I was saved. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about spiritually saved, friend. I go to church. I'm not talking about going to church. I keep the Ten Commandments. I'm not talking about keeping the Ten Commandments. I've been baptized. I'm not talking about being baptized, friend. I'm talking about have you been saved. I've been confirmed. I'm not talking about being confirmed. I've been, I've been to catechism classes. I've, I know all that stuff. I don't. I had a little boy on my bus one day. I said, what's today? I said, it's Tuesday. Oh, I hate Tuesday. I said, well, why do you hate Tuesday? So because we've got religion classes. And what's that got to do with anything? I hate going to religion classes because I know all there is to know about God. I said, you know everything there is to know about God? Yeah, I said, I know all there is to know about God. Well, I didn't bother arguing with a kid. But there are multitudes of people like that. Well, I really don't want to go to church. I really... Um, you know, I, as most of you know, I drive a school bus. One of my, I said last week that sometimes I let my kids drive the school bus. Now, you do know one of, one of the dear ladies in our church, and I know that she knows. She said, you're going to get in trouble. You told people on the radio that you, you let the kids drive the school bus. No, I don't. But anyway, I digress. There were some kids got on, and they said, I don't like going to church. It's boring. I said, well, you must not go to the church I go to. Friend, I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about being baptized or being a member or having perfect Sunday school attendance or knowing the Ten Commandments or knowing the Beatitudes. I'm talking about this morning. Have you ever known when, that you were in great peril and that there was absolutely no hope? No hope, none, without hope. And you realize that, man, I need something. And somebody told you about Jesus. Like Dr. Heinsohn, when somebody said, hey, would you like to go to heaven and live forever? It's a free gift. All you got to do is receive it. Well, who wouldn't want to do that? Who wouldn't want to live forever? Who wouldn't want to go to heaven and live in the paradise of God to be with your friends and to be with your family and to those people that you have known and loved 
in this life. Wouldn't you like to know that? So yes, I would, preacher. What do I have to do? Number one, you have to realize you're in great peril. Number two, you have to realize that it is a free gift and it's yours for the taking. And see, that's the thing about a gift. A gift is not something you earn. If you had to go, if, if somebody said, well, if you have to go to Sunday school for every Sunday, 52 weeks in a row to get it, well, then you'd be earning it. If I told you to come to church and say, all right, I want you to go out and run around the church 20 times, and then you can have it, you'd be earning it. If I said, well, you have to get baptized, then you can get it, you would be earning it. Salvation is a free gift. The Bible repeatedly says, so the free gift. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. A gift is not something you earn. A gift is something that is given to you freely and that you freely receive. When you have to understand that you are in great peril and you could fall over the cliff, over the edge, fall through the rotten boards, the rope break, and you would be cast down into hell, you are in great peril today, dear friend. And then secondly, realize that it is a free gift and all that you must do is receive that gift. What is a gift? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift is eternal life and it's free and it's in someone. That someone is Jesus who came, died, and paid our sin debt, paid the debt that you and I owe that we could not pay. Jesus paid it all, all to him. An old sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. My friend, when you are willing to believe that, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Not in his name, but on his name. To believe on his name. To call upon whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who then can be saved? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, would you call upon him today? You're in great peril. You need to trust Jesus today. Call upon him today. Who then can be saved? Whosoever will. Come to Christ today, friend. Trust him today because listen, tomorrow just might be too late. Aren't you glad that this gift is free? It's not even Christmas time. And we're telling you about a super free gift from the Almighty God that offers you something way better than anything this world could offer. It offers you a home in heaven. And it's free for everyone. It doesn't matter what color you are, what race you are. It is for everyone. If you have any questions about today's program and how you can know for sure that you are going to heaven, or if you just want to let us know that you have already made this decision to be born again and be freed of your sins and be promised a home in heaven, why don't you call us today? Our phone number here is 315-348-6271 or you can write us. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com or even better yet, why don't you just come join us today? Come right face to face and tell us what decision you have already made or come here and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and find out more about how you can know for sure that you are going to heaven. We cannot wait to meet you. There is an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us today. Lord will, and we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.